Hello. I want to spend some time today talking about uh, impulse and how that changes the momentum of a system uh, and how we can use that with our bar charts to solve problems where the total momentum is not being conserved. So first of all, uh, if we think back to our prior reading about impulse, we know that impulse is the area of a force versus time graph and that the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. So if I have a system where there is an external force from outside of that system pushing on stuff in the system, then that can change the momentum, increase or decrease the momentum of the system. Now, if those are equal, um, the impulse and the change in momentum, then the units should also be equal. Um, our unit for impulse, if it's the area of a force versus time graph, then that area is going to have units of force times time, so newtons times seconds in this case. Um, but the, the units should match if they're equal. Um, you know, you can't have like $12 equal to... Uh, seven uh, apples, that doesn't make any sense. Um, we need to have units be the same thing. So does our unit of momentum, kilogram meters per second, match up with our unit of impulse, Newton's time seconds? And the answer is yes. If we just dig into what is a Newton made out of, um, we know that a Newton is a kilogram times a meter per second squared based on the definition of what is a Newton. So if we multiply kilograms times meters per second squared times seconds, then that does uh, come out to be kilograms times meters per second. We know that because multiplying by seconds, that's in the numerator. So we've got one seconds in the numerator, and then we've got seconds squared in the denominator, seconds divided by seconds squared. One of those seconds then divides out from the num from the denominator, and so kilograms times meters per second is equivalent to the unit of impulse newtons times seconds. So with that thinking about the units out of the way, uh, let's look at a situation where uh, the momentum of a system does not stay the same. I've got a volleyball moving to the right; um, it gets hit by a player by a volleyball player. So the volleyball player hits the ball to the left, and we know that she hits it with an average force of 68 newtons over a collision time of 0.2 seconds, um, which in collision times between things hitting each other tends to be pretty small um, for most collisions. Uh, 0.2 seconds is actually uh, relatively large because a volleyball is going to squish a bit and unsquish. Um, it takes a lot more time than like really rigid things that hit each other. So we want to find the speed of the ball after the player hits it. So if our system is just the volleyball, then there is definitely a force external to the system. Um, something that's not part of our system hits the ball, uh, that's the player. And so that's going to change the momentum of our system. So let's look at how that works with our bar charts. So initially, if I'm going to say that this volleyball was moving with a positive velocity, it was moving to the right, had a positive velocity, um, then it had some initial positive momentum, and I make my bar charts for momentum the same way I ever have. So the width of it is the mass of the ball, the height is the velocity of the ball. So 0.4 kilograms by 16 meters per second, uh, and that's positive for the initial momentum of the ball. Now, the final momentum of the ball, um, I know that the ball is going to be moving to the left after the player hits it, but I don't know how fast. I do know that the mass of the ball hasn't changed, so I'm going to have a negative, because moving to the left opposite direction, I'm going to have a negative final velocity, but I don't know how much. Uh, I do know, though, that the player has changed the momentum of the ball based on that hit. And the impulse... Oh, and I have upgraded my uh, bar charts to include what changes the momentum of the system. I take my starting amount, I add in the amount that I change by, and that tells me my new final amount. That would be true for any kind of change. If I had $30 and it changed by positive $20, now I have add the two together and it's $50.
If I had $30 and I have a change of negative $10, I add those two together. $30 plus negative $10 leaves me with a final amount of $20. Same is true with any change in an amount. You take what you started with, then you add to it however much it changed by, and then that's your new final amount. So in this case, I have a negative change from the player hitting the ball to the left. So there was a negative force. And so I'm drawing this force versus time graph, which let's remember that area does have the same dimensions as the momentum area. So the width of that force versus time graph, based on the information above, 0.2 seconds, 68 newtons tells me how tall that bar is, and it's a negative force because, again, the player is hitting the ball to the left. So that tells me how much the momentum changes by. So if I take my starting momentum, and I can do that math, 0.4 kilograms times 16 meters per second gives me 6.4 kilogram meters per second. Plus, I've got a change of 0.2 seconds times negative 68 newtons, means that the momentum of the system changed by negative 13.6 newton seconds, or negative 13.6 kilogram meters per second. And then that leaves me with my final momentum of 0.4 kilograms times some unknown velocity. And because I know all of these other numbers aside from the unknown velocity, then I can use my knowledge of the starting momentum, the change in momentum, tells me that I must end up in the end with a momentum of negative 7.2 kilogram meters per second. And so that negative 7.2 kilogram meters per second, and again, the negative sign is just saying the ball is now moving to the left, that's equal to the mass of the ball times its final velocity. So we end up then, we divide to solve for the final velocity, and we end up with the final velocity of negative 18 meters per second. So just checking on that, um, the volleyball was moving to the right at 16 meters per second. Player hits it back in the opposite direction, and then the ball ends up with a, a large final speed in the opposite direction. And we can calculate the exact amount based on, <coughs> excuse me, we can calculate the exact amount by using the bar chart and just keeping track. We started with this much momentum, it changed by that which leaves us with this final amount. And since we can know that final amount, then we can calculate that unknown velocity. So good times, I'll see you later.